guess what happened, I'll give you three guesses. No, I'm not quitting making YouTube videos. Number one. No, I'm not gay. Number two. Just being silly ass with my gas cigar. And number three. It's Radio Friends with episode 224. If you guessed that last one, you're right. That That's what's going on here. This week, we're going to be talking about Nostron. Aka. Nostron 666. Aka. Nostron 666, but there's a space between the Nostron and the 666. Whatever, it's fucking Nostron. And the reason we will be talking about them is because, for the most part, new metal sucks. Well, yeah, obviously, all new metal spelled N-U new metal fucking blows. Yeah, no fucking thanks. But even most new metal spelled N-E-W metal kind of fucking sucks. To demonstrate this, I bought a few new albums this year, 2022, that came out. I mean, I got that new Nocturnal Mortem, and that's pretty good. But it's also an album by a band that's been around in one form or another since 1991, and the whole thing is a reimagining of songs from their 1996 demo, so that's not really new metal. I mean, that new Grand Belial's Key album's pretty good. But even though that was released in 2022, it's double not new metal because... Number one. Again, that band started in like 1992 and... Number two. It was actually recorded in 2016. Bet you didn't know that. Gotta look at them liner notes, boy. <laughs> boy. Then we got the new Chasm album just came out yesterday. Obviously, that's great, but also, again, this band started in 1992 and been putting out albums consistently since then. Then we got something that might be a little bit closer to a uh, new metal band, that being Stongarigo. <laughs> you think, okay, finally, some good new metal from a new band that no one has heard of. This is their debut album, and it's awesome. Except, it's a side project of the Remarath and Malakarpatan guys who have been doing this kind of stuff since at least 2005. And then finally, we have the upcoming album from Wormrot. And finally, we have something close to good new metal, because they started in like 2007, their first album came out in 2009, that's pretty fucking new. Oh wait, you're right, 2007 was 15 fucking years ago! What do you mean, how do I know if it's any good if it hasn't come out yet? Bro, have you heard the fucking samples? Of course that's gonna be a great album, don't be silly. But yeah, new metal generally blows, and even the stuff that I'm getting that is new isn't actually that new. So that means what I have to do is go way back to the 90s and find some cool albums that might have been overlooked. And I mean, there was plenty of shitty music back then too, don't get me wrong. A lot of that stuff was forgotten for a reason. But there are some really good forgotten 90s albums out there. One that I've been listening to a lot lately is Eternal Sufferings Drowning in Tragedy. So obviously this is brutal death metal. And not so obviously, that's Wayne from Decrepitaf on vocals before he kick-started the whole retro death thing. He was involved in playing some very modern sounding brutal death metal, at least for the time period. And it's pretty fucking great. And I never hear anybody talk about this album. I sort of found it by accident. That's a good example of an excellent forgotten old school album. Another one of those that I've been pretty interested in lately is Tenebrarum from Mexico's Alta Magia. This stuff is almost sort of like a Western Hemisphere counterpart to what Septic Flesh were doing at the same time, you know, 1994. They're about with some really interesting combinations of atmospheric keyboard work and subdued, doomy guitar playing that then goes into... Very fast, brutal death metal with more than a slight hint of a melodic tinge to it. If you found stuff like early Cenotaph or the Chasm interesting, you'd probably dig it. And this finally leads us back to Nostrond. Aka. Nostrond 666. Aka. Nostrond, but they don't put the little circle thing over the A sometimes. These are guys whose name I've been aware of for a while, but I never really got around to listening to them. Because there's a lot of conflicting factors that could either point to this being a really good band 
band or a really bad band. Like, I'm a busy man. There's only so many hours in the day. I don't have time to listen to everything. So when I do go out of my way to listen to something, I have to take a degree of consideration into what I'm going to be listening to. So Nostrand were signed to Napalm Records. <laughs> Now, now, don't take that as a negative yet, because we're not talking about modern-day Napalm Records, where the only good thing they do is occasionally shit out a summoning album, and then the rest of it is that Beauty and the Beast crap where, like, there's the guy growling and the chick singing back and forth. That shit almost unilaterally sucks, pretty much unless it's from Japan or Korea and it's really high energy with all the electronic stuff and the melodic death metal riffs. <laughs> You know, your Sin Snakes, your Bloodstained Childs, your Merging Moons, that kind of thing. That's good. That's the only way I've heard that done successfully as being the backbone of the music. Otherwise, you know, it's cool when it happens on like Early Paradise Lost or Septic Flesh or something. But most of the time, that shit is a fucking mistake. And we're not even talking about like early aughts Napalm Records where they had a bunch of past their prime black metal bands with really fucking shitty album covers. <laughs> Like, seriously, have you seen that shit? Fire your fucking graphic designer. No, we're talking about early Napalm Records, when they put out a whole bunch of very unique-sounding stuff, like Suffer and Miasma and Moctatus and Abigor back when they were good. Remember that? That's this era of Napalm. So, so far, it's looking good for them. But then I remember where I had seen their name initially, and it was as being part of a cadre of bands that influenced this band that, and here I'm going to drop my hottest take, the one that makes a whole lot of people that would other lies agree with everything I say fucking hate me. Death Spell Omega. I don't care for them very much. Sheesh, uh, lady. Okay, look, I kind of like Infernal Batters and Inquisitors of Satan, but it's a product of my upbringing, man. Fucking, when I was getting into black metal, C Monumentum Requieres was like the biggest fucking thing ever. It was so overhyped, and I just, I wasn't feeling it. Probably because I was getting into stuff like Burzum at the same time, and it's just, man, that shit doesn't compare. Bye. A lot of the bands that influenced that spell, Omega, were pretty darn good and really cool, like, overlooked black metal, especially the ones from Sweden. You know, like, Offer Mod and Malign and Funeral Mist before they got all lame. And Nostrand is from Sweden, so what could have been something bad, for me at least, ended up being something, okay, this sounds promising. Finally, these guys sing about dark Germanic heathenism and like chaos Gnosticism. I've been around for a while, I still am not entirely sure what the fuck dark Germanic heathenism is. All I know is, a lot of the bands that sing about it, particularly the Swedish ones, end up being pretty fucking good. Like back in the day, you had Svart Sin and Arcanum, and then nowadays, one of the greatest one-man black metal acts out there is the dude behind Tom Het, Wagner Odegaard, and Volkanaz. That he's all about that shit, and that stuff slaps. Which is another point in their favor. Finally, I see a lot of talk about these guys not sounding very Nordic. For black metal, that could be good or bad. Good could be something like Monin of Zezbeth. Bad could be war metal. Ah, shit. Sheesh, lady, listen. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, and mine smells a lot better than everyone else's. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So here we go. First Nostrand album, Tote Slot. Keyboards sound exactly like early Burzum, already a point in their favor. But then when the guitars kick in, does it really not sound very Nordic to you? It's certainly a lot darker than what you would normally expect from so-called true Norwegian, or in this case, true Swedish black metal. However, I submit to you that these guys do, in fact, sound very Nordic. It's just that they're working with a different strain of ye old Nordic black metal sound. To demonstrate my point, This right here is some old school Emperor stuff, a band most commonly remembered nowadays for being sort of the genesis of the whole symphonic melodic black metal thing way back in the day. But as you heard there, that was some really dark, filthy grinding, not in the sense that it's grindcore, but in the sense that it actually feels like the music is grinding against itself type of black metal. That sort of filth might not be associated with the increasingly melodic strains of what Scandinavian black metal became by the mid 90s. But as far as early Nordic black metal goes in terms of that nastiness and filth, I would say Nostrand is very Nordic sounding. <laughs> 
They really lean heavily on those grinding, sliding, slinking, furtive sort of dark black metal riffs that were big and early black metal and kind of left later on, unfortunately, because I like that style a lot. Also, their keyboard usage is minimalist, but highly effective, and I really like the tone of them. Like I said, very burzum. And those vocals, man. Check this shit out, dude. Did you hear that rolled R? That was good stuff. I've seen a lot of comparisons between this and early Black Funeral, mostly for ideological reasons, but musically, I think there's commonalities as well, with how dark and medieval it sounds. However, one thing they do that Black Funeral doesn't really do is a full stop like the one you just heard. The music is big on these sections of blasting that are then cordoned off by... Cool little full stops and lots of just really good sonic layering. Obviously this isn't quote unquote symphonic black metal. But I submit to you that it has a very orchestral feel to it, particularly in how they use the drums for accents. Here's a really solid atmospheric blast beat laden build up riff that's going to lead into another sort of trademark of this era of Nostron sound. That being this section where everything but the guitars drop out and they're doing this really cool droney reiteration of that riff from the opening of the song that then leads into, I guess what we could call for lack of a better term, dark Germanic heathenism. Because this is folky sounding, but it's not really like happy or jovial drinking music at all. It's very dark and very primitive. And the lyrics on this one in particular are all about werewolves, but in like a spiritual sense. A berserker-style metamorphosis of the soul. A very interesting song on this album in terms of its meta-placement within the overall sphere of black metal happens right before the end of the album, and it's called Grave Stench. Ugh. Nobody wants to smell your nasty fucking B.O. It's like, you know what? So this song is probably one of the few really good examples of something I like to call the black metal metal throwback track wherein an established 90s black metal band decides to do a fun little song in the style of 80s black metal you know Bathory, Venom, that kind of shit. You can hear this on the second Gorgoroth album with the song Possessed by Satan, which, if you ask me, isn't like a terrible song, but it kind of doesn't really fit with the really melodic sort of neoclassical bent they were going with at that point in their career. It's an okay song, it's nothing amazing, but that's usually about as good as these kind of songs get. Most of the time, they end up being like Emperor's Warriors of Modern Death. Which is literally the fucking worst. This is like, not to get too Brett Stevens, but straight up circus music. It's fucking terrible, dude. Knock that shit off. But here's where that Nostron song comes in, because this is probably the only example I can think of of the primitive black metal throwback song not being either like kind of a weird little curiosity or a part of the album where everything just goes to shit for like three minutes. Gravestench is actually an amazing song in its own right, and it fits well with the rest of the album. It starts off with a pretty standard first three notes of the Phrygian mode type of ultra primitive riff, but they manage to use a lot of variance in guitar texture and very aggressive drum buildup to make that sort of interesting. It's almost like a black metal counterpart to obituaries chopped in half. It's got their standard full stop transition into a faster version of that riff, and then that leads into something even more interesting in terms of orchestration. Utilization of timpanis linking together these very primitive Celtic Frost style riff segments. That idea of using orchestral percussion to link together disparate sections of music would become very important on their second album, Age of Fire. Now this one, it seems like people don't like it as much as Toteslot. I'm not sure if I agree. I hold them both in equal esteem, but this is a very different album. For starters, a lot of these songs lean way more heavily into that very sort of orchestral, timpani-led, full stop and transition dominant sort of songwriting style they were hinting at in the debut. This might have been a shock to the system of people that really dug the simultaneously grindy but consonant and melodic kind of shit they were doing on the debut album. This is definitely way more percussive in how it impacts the listener. There isn't really a whole lot of aesthetic crossover with Burzum anymore, at least in songs like this. However, the heavy focus on atmosphere remains with odd little keyboard interludes interspersed throughout the album, such as the one you are hearing right now. 
and they have an interesting way of unfolding into new sections of black metal such as this one right here happens right in the first full song after the intro big emphasis on this highly symphonic style of music focused around on very occult invocation segments songs like that clearly different than what was going on in the debut however if you really dug the debut don't fret because there's plenty of songs in this album that sound exactly like they could have come off the debut album like this one right here entitled womb of chaos interestingly enough it comes right after that song i just played which was called winged phallus interesting that they have these two diametrically opposed sexual concepts forming the lyrical content of songs that have diametrically opposed styles of black metal going on. That first one was very forceful and percussive, so that one's about wieners. This one's a little bit more melodic and enveloping, so it's about vaginas. What you sexy guys? You are hentai? But much like those two concepts are much better when merged, my favorite songs in this album meld these two approaches, the new more percussive one and the older flowing melodicism. Which introduces a riff in that new very percussive impact heavy style before transitioning into playing that same riff in the older black metal style. And then it goes back to the new percussive style before finally building up to a full stop. God damn it! With the timpanis then introducing a flowing melodic phrase. It's an interesting way of combining these two approaches and why I think this album is great. Because each time they bonk the drum, they introduce a new variant on that melody or add another guitar layer, and it makes for a very dynamic sense of songwriting. Utilization of timpanis in black metal goes back to Dark Throne and even before that, Celtic Frost on Two Megatherian. But in terms of actually integrating that sort of stuff into the songwriting, I think Nostrand does a better job than just about everybody else who usually just uses that for atmospheric effect. This part coming up right here gets really crazy with the full stops. Just like over and over, sort of a Viking rowing chant type thing. And it's even incorporating a little bit of industrial stuff and some weird ambient keyboard drums. So overall, Age of Fire is a great album, and so is Tota Slot. If you slept on these guys, you should definitely check those two albums out. Apparently, after a prolonged period of inactivity, they got back together and put out a few new things during the 2000s. I haven't heard those yet, but I'd be interested to check them out at some point. I will definitely vouch for those first two Nostrand albums, though. Those are amazing. Go and get them if you like weird, spooky black metal, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Go find your boyfriend! Okay. Out! Good thinking. You Don't let the floor hit you. Yeah, shut up! Wish me luck. Shut up! I got a match today. Shut up! So for you to attack me is like taking candy from a baby. But I'm a big fucking baby. Shut up! Shut up!